All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's take a look at what happens to microphones, vocal mics, when we use them. Um, if you watched the video I did on building a seven foot long tube speaker using Audix microphone capsules as tweeters, you may have wondered why in the heck do I have a big pile? Oh, God. Well, it's not right there. A big pile of Audix microphone caps. This, um, what would anybody be doing with all of these caps? And um, what they are, I'm going to set these down, is those are all capsules that were returned to me after rebuilds of microphones for Red Hot Chili Peppers and Pearl Jam Tour. Um, each tour, uh, the singers use an Audix OM7, and they'll switch that mic out two, maybe three times during the show. The mic gets spitted out, it starts to build up some water in there, some spit, and um, it gets duller. And when it builds up that um, residue, that moisture, it becomes less stable and more likely to feed back. Well, after quite a few shows, not even that many shows, that residue starts to build up onto the diaphragm and causes a change in the frequency response. If you're doing like low uh, capacity club shows or you know smaller gigs, this is not really that big of an issue until it gets really bad. But for the top level stuff where we're running uh, monitors before they were in in-ears as much and we're really trying to get as much out of these monitor systems as possible the nuances of getting this perfect and having a really crisp clear stable mic is extremely important so important that we would rebuild all of the mics after each tour leg and so there's how those microphone capsules ended up in my drawer over there now, <clears throat> I decided to build a tube speaker out of them because I tested them for um, their frequency response and they have an excellent high frequency response. Their very light diaphragms are very clear and it's really a high quality expensive tweeter uh, or full range speaker if you were to use it for something very, very close. So let's go ahead and take a look at the real world of what happens to vocal mics over time. Uh, I went into the rat shop and grabbed uh, several mics out of the rental inventory. I also grabbed some brand new uh, SM58s as well that were right out of the box. They've never been sung into. Um, oh, here is the um, tweeter, 3D printed tweeter um, and woofer enclosure from the seven foot tube speaker. And what I'm going to do is show you how to test your microphones with or without uh, test equipment to get an idea of where they are in the spectrum. Now this is kind of reliant on having a new or a reference microphone to compare to. Also, you could do this with, um, without a reference mic and just using a sound source and measuring the frequency response of them but this will allow us to hear the differences a little bit better. So the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna put headphones on during this so I can hear what's going on. And we're gonna want a couple mic cables. These are just small jumper cables. Take these off. And a polarity reverse. Now you can do this on an analog console or a digital console. And the polarity reverse is built into the console uh, on most consoles. This console does not have a polarity reverse, so I've got a polarity reverse cable instead. So what we'll do is we'll plug the polarity reverse into one channel and a mic cable into that. And what I'm going to do is calibrate this so that we have um, we know what's going on. And then I'm going to take the other cable that does not have a polarity verse and plug that into channel two. And now I have the in and out of polarity. Next, I'm going to plug a Y cable 
into both cables so that they're having the exact same signal sent to them. And I'm going to grab a microphone how about um, this guy here. And I'm going to use a Synect sound bullet for this. And along with that, I've got a small set of earbuds. You can use, um, it's better if they're kind of very symmetrical and they don't have a port on them, or you could use the bullet itself, um, but having a smaller output is uh, useful for this test. So we'll turn that on and listen to that. And we'll run that into this microphone. Let's make sure it works. Hey, 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 two, two, two. Um, before we go too far, I'm going to check it without. Okay, so there is a mic without the polarity verse. You can hear that there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the gains. I've already got those set here, but you can set the gains to be the same exact. You're going to set the gains to be the same exact volume, and then you'll bring up the faders so that it cancels out. The EQ should be disengaged, and you're going to find this null. So you've got two signals, in polarity and out of polarity, being summed together such that they cancel out. And it's very touchy. This will be easier on a digital console with a fader. And you want to get as much cancellation as possible. So now we've got these gains up very high on the console. And the two signals are summed together, so they're canceling out, so we have very little output. All right, there's my dog, DB. So I'm going to now turn down the headphones, because it'll be very loud. Unplug the Y cable. And now we've got our setup so that we can plug in two different microphones. We know that the same signal going into both cancels out extremely well. So what if we take and plug in two different microphones? So here's a brand new um, SM58. And I'm going to move this out of the way here. And every single thing will affect this. So there's going to be uh, any inconsistency. So having something that's soft and sound absorptive is helpful, um, actually important. And then I'll take the other mic cable and plug it into another microphone. And now we have our two mics. There's one, there's the other. And if you are familiar with the Grateful Dead wall of sound where they use two mics right above each other, this is what they were doing. They had two mics that they canceled out and then they would sing into one of them and um, you would hear the sound. And if you sang into the other, you would hear the sound. But if you sing into both, it gets very quiet. All right, let's see. all right. And we have an analyzer as well. Great. So now, let's make sure that doesn't touch the console. With the two mics plugged in, I can talk into both of them. Hey, 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 two, two, two. Hey, 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 there's one. And there's the other. And together, they should be fairly quiet. Now, if I take these two microphones, and set them up so that they're exactly the same distance. And I put the sound into one. And I can try and find a null between them. And that's about as good as I'm getting. And that's with an old mic and a new mic. Let's go ahead and try two brand new mics. If we look at the RTA here.
we can see that we get a considerable amount of cancellation in the high frequency. Now let's go ahead and try an old mic and a new mic. And you'll notice that the high frequencies up, they never cancel. And we can see that here too, if I just put the frequency generator up to the mic. Here's the new mic. And the old mic. And if you look at the 16K, 20K, So that's an easy way of doing it. This here is even more sensitive. So this mic here has got some degradation to it. Let's go ahead and check some other mics. Let's go back to the, let's go to um, two new mics. There's one, there's the other, there's both. As you can see, I'm able to get a lot of cancellation. Now what's interesting is all mics, even new, don't match up perfectly. Here's another new mic. And these don't cancel as well. Although we do have high frequency from this one and high frequency from this one, I can't get them to know as good as I could get the other two new mics. Um, let's go ahead and check a couple more. And we're hearing high frequency because there's no no of the high frequency. If one mic is very dull, then it can't cancel out the high frequency and therefore we hear high frequency in this um, null test. Let's go ahead and go back to the new mic and check that again. Pretty good and all there. And we'll check an old mic to an old mic. He's now a little bit better. Get my hand out of the way. So these two older mics are, are better. So this one here had the most. Um, lacking it lacked the most high frequency and nulled uh, had the worst no cool so just a heads up that uh, mics do wear out if they get caked and now they can get really bad i mean we don't let them get that bad in the rental inventory but they can get caked up over time and their sound does degrade and it will make your monitors less stable and harder to hear and a new mic uh, will very often be a lot clearer. Now, you don't need to take it to the realm of doing, you know, six to 12 shows on a mic before you rebuild it. On the other hand, uh, checking your mic inventory, your vocal mics to make sure that they're not degraded could be a, a turbo boost to getting your monitors clearer and louder. Uh, different manufacturers have different quality consistency between various mics. We've had mics come in straight from the factory that do not sound good enough. And so testing your mics and making sure that they're uh, f 
is flat and stable or you know they have the frequency response when they get built up stuff on them that dulls the sound it adds weight to the diaphragm it can get honky it can get mid-rangey uh, spit and gunk can build up around the ports and it'll start to whistle um, so cool hope you um, find that useful